This is my first time working with dried chilies. I believe this is called an ancho chili and a negro chili. Um, when you make a zero point chili, you're taking out a lot of stuff that gives you a depth of flavor. And the really cool thing about these is you cut out all the seeds and veins and stuff, but they give you all of these wonderful flavors, the contrast between the different peppers, and it's a really cool way to amp up your chili. So we're going to toast these. Um, this is hot pan. We just throw them on here just for a few minutes on like medium to medium high heat just so that it can get smoky and f smell kind of neat. Uh, once that's going, we just throw some water in the pan and bring it to, I believe it's called a bare simmer, if I have that right. But, you know, once it's doing that, you just cover the pan. I don't have the lid for this pan. Sorry. Um, and then it comes off the heat and sits for a half hour while you do the rest of your prep work. Green onions or scallions. I don't know if there's a version of uh, having too much of these. Like, even if you just use what you use and you just keep the rest in the fridge. So I always overbuy these. I like the white bits, by the way. Garlic. There is no such thing as too much garlic. I don't think I've ever made anything and not used an entire bulb. This little guy. This is my... I call them my choppy grindy thing. I don't know. It's Cuisinart, it says. Um, anyway, this is what it looks like when you use it with one hand because you're using the camera. It has a chop button and a grind button, and I kind of use them both indiscriminately, so everything just sort of winds up in these tiny little bits, but whatever. It's chilly. It doesn't have to be pretty. So this is a Vidalia onion, or a yellow onion. Uh, <laughs> cute. But once that's chopped up, same thing. Um, I probably don't have to narrate all of this, but... Yeah. Oh, this part's a big deal, of course, right? I'm clearly using all jalapenos, and I'm using a lot of jalapenos, because I like the flavor, but I'm not trying to get a lot of heat. You can do that by mixing up your peppers. Like, a single tiny bit of habanero pepper in this is really going to drive it all up. That's not what I'm trying to do. I want everyone to be able to enjoy this. So I do a lot of peppers, because we want the flavor, but you get in there, you devein them, you deseed them, and jalapenos can kind of blend in with everything else. Um... Because this is supposed to be a chili for everybody. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's... Maybe other people are trying to do other things. I'm, I'm not. So that's a piece of ginger and a piece of horseradish. Um, I actually... One of them... You're supposed to peel one of them, and I forgot which one it is, so I peeled them both. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the ginger, because it looks wetter. But anyway, this... Same thing, right? This gets ground up, and... In a little choppy thing, it goes. So cilantro, which not everyone likes, because people taste it different chemically, which is bizarre. Um, I take the stems off. You can apparently eat the stems, but no, nobody nobody wants that. But this is the part that I'm really excited about, because like I said, I haven't used dried chilies before. Um, I found the thing online, and um, man, just the smells coming out of this. Um, you really get a sense that this is going to do something very kind of magical, which is why I like cooking in the first place. Uh, you want to make sure you incorporate some of the liquid that you use to reconstitute the thing. And we're going to add some spices. Uh, that high-fat cocoa, it's a natural cocoa, apparently at zero points. I have no idea why. Now, I was worried that I was going to have to add, like, cornmeal to this as a thickening agent. But, um, man, just, just look at what you get. I mean, it smells amazing. It has this wonderful texture. It's just, I'm really excited that I decided to try it. Uh, 99% fat-free ground turkey, as advertised. Um, turkey chili is boring, but you can really go to town amping it up. Um, you can add as many spices as you want. There's nothing stopping you, you know? It's all zero points, and it is how you get complexity of flavor. It's how you make it delicious. And then it's on to the beans. Um, People are doing a lot of three bean chilies, and that's totally cool. I just don't know what beans I'd want to add to chili besides kidney beans and black beans. I mean, you do you. Uh, but of course, they're canned, so you strain them, you rinse them, and then they go into this bowl where I'm going to start assembling the actual chili. I almost got tripped up on the canned tomatoes. This is crushed tomatoes, right? Because a lot of that stuff actually has uh, salt added, which would be points, and that almost caught me so make sure you check and then spices again um i go to town i measure my spices using these little piles so yeah uh but now it's time to actually cook the chili so a little bit of oil i hope you can forgive me that but then it's uh you do the onions don't drop it the uh garlic 
the horseradish and ginger and then you know I'm sure there's nothing new here but once that's all fragrant and whatnot you add your jalapeno and I hope you have a fan in your kitchen and just let that merge together into something you're excited about eating but of course you don't want to overcook it which is why I always take the vegetables out and set them aside because you want to cook the meat in this pan right let all those little bits of vegetable work their way in naturally and then of course you get this part where you sort of shape the meat which is I think kind of special now this crispy stuff on the bottom of the pan, that's called fond. You're supposed to deglaze that uh, with wine, or in this case, it's chili, so it was like a Mexican beer, or I use tequila, but um, this is a zero-point chili, so that's actually water. I just put it into a tequila bottle because I thought it would be fancy. Um, but yeah, you scrape up all of this stuff, and this is the key to actual deliciousness. And it's pretty much already assembled. The veggies, the spices, the tomatoes, the meat, the beans, everything we've put together is already ready to go. Oh, well, we haven't, I forgot about this because I haven't used it before, but the spice paste. Um, give me a second. There's not much left to do, but just let it sit on a slow simmer and let it develop into whatever it develops into. In this case, uh, it had a really robust and complex flavor, but it was also very heavy. So we did some experiments with some different acids and different ways to add some brightness. What you have there is some apple cider vinegar, and that's a navel orange that my in-laws sent from Florida. And it turns out that that was the best way to go. All of the spices and whatnot that's already in the chili was giving it this depth and complexity, but this is what it was missing. It was missing this brightness. And I think this is like a key part. Whenever you're cooking, whatever path your food has taken, there's always one thing that you can do that will make it something miles better. And as long as we're experimenting, I wanted to try to find a kind of cheesy, ranchy thing to put on top of the chili. And uh, dill weed in Greek yogurt. I mean, who knew? And that's it. That's my zero point chili. And I loved it so much. And I would 100% stack this against any other chili that you get anywhere zero point or not. I mean, there's a lot of people that are going to be really adamant that like a really good chili has to have beef or pork or venison or whatever. But you know what? Like those meats, what makes them different is the fat and the way that it sort of weaves into the muscle tissue. Um, and that's what makes good meat, but that's not what makes good chili. Chili is about the warmth and the, the heat, which are obviously are two different things. And also the, just all the complexity and depth and just the, the eating experience. I, I think that we don't quite make that enough of a deal. But yeah, this is my jam.